So in today's video, we're talking about basic beginner tips for anybody looking to get into house plants. It is spring, then that means you're going to be seeing plants pretty much everywhere you go. Grocery stores are going to have them. Home improvement stores are going to have a lot of them, and other stores will as well. And I figured I'd share some tips that I've learned over the last couple of years that I've been keeping house plants to hopefully help you get involved and be successful at keeping them. But what's going on, guys? Justin from H2OPlants.com, and typically this is an aquatic channel. We usually do aquatic plant videos and other stuff having to do with aquariums. But in the past. I've done some houseplant videos and those seem to be well liked so I figured I'd give you some just basic general tips this is for really just new entry-level people coming into the houseplant uh, kind of hobby and that want to be successful so I have about eight uh, actually I think yeah I have eight plants here that I'm going to show you today we're going to kind of talk a little bit about them they're not going to be an in-depth having to do with the plant but I think each kind of plant gives its own kind of uh, information having to do with uh, houseplant hobby and that way maybe it'll teach you something about these. So uh, first thing is I wanted to kind of go over where you get the plants because like I said you're going to be seeing them everywhere whether it's a supermarket, your Home Depot or Lowe's or pretty much any any kind of store is going to have houseplants. They're usually all over the place because houseplants are booming right now. It's a huge industry. So I will say you can buy them from anywhere. The majority of my plants have come from big box stores which is just fine. I do have some plants that I ordered online, I do have some plants that I got from other people, and I have some plants that I got from specialty nurseries as well that are local to me. So really any one of those are good options, but I will say the ones that are typically found at your big box stores and grocery stores, like the really common areas, those are going to be particularly easy plants to grow. So those are good for beginners and that's what this video is aimed for. So uh, definitely if you're walking by in the supermarket you happen to see a really nice plant that you think you like. Look up the name first on your phone, figure out if it's going to work for you, and then go ahead and buy it. should be fine. Now, that's going to bring me into my next two points is quarantining and doing research. So, when you're at that plan, you're looking at it and deciding if you want to buy it or not, definitely look it up to see if it's something that's going to fit with your house. Now, I know from my old apartment, we had a decent amount of windows, but nothing that was going to be crazy good for lighting. Uh, plants, so we didn't have very many house plants to begin with. When we moved here, we had really good lighting. I have windows all over the place, and I have really good lighting for this. And I know uh, some people that only have a maybe they have like a basement apartment or something. They only have a couple windows, like you know, small windows, and they can only keep smaller plants. So you, you want to find plants that are going to fit your need based on the size of the area that you have and kind of where you're looking to put them. And then also quarantining, because quarantining plants is highly important, and I got an example. So a couple, I would say maybe early winter last year, in 2018, I picked this plant up, and there's actually some stuff on it still. So I picked this up, and it looked fine. I didn't see anything wrong with it. But I do know that if you bring home a new plant and you put it next to your other plants, they can have a possibility of getting exposed to something that they didn't have before. This guy actually has mealybugs. Mealybugs are a pest. They're a little white bug that actually uh, seeks, uh, sticks their teeth into the kind of the exoskeleton of the plant in a way, uh, like the, the veins of the plant. And they start sucking out the, the juices, the, the fluid that are running through it. And that's how they kind of get their nourishment and it deprives the plant of what they need. So you don't want that spreading because they'll get out of control really fast. They're hard to kind of maintain once they do get out of control. And so I kept this guy isolated for quite a bit. And then I realized the mealybug problem. I saw white bugs all over the place and I immediately acted. I've been proactively doing so, trying to get rid of them, but I still see one or two here so it's not completely squashed yet but I'm getting there there was a lot on this guy and that's why if you look over here there's barely any plant left because uh, the treatments that I was doing I'm doing a little bit of, uh, kind of a, of a harsh treatment because this plant can kind of withstand the abuse of that treatment so I'm not too worried about it and also it was kind of one of those plants that I just picked up on a whim and I wouldn't be super sad if it if it didn't make it but I think it's gonna do fine it seems to be very vigorous at growing despite all the treatments of stuff that I'm doing. I'm not going to quite go into detail what I'm doing with mealybugs. There's tons of videos online you can watch to see uh, and maybe I'll do my own in the future but this video is not about how to take care of those in particular. But so what I do is I like to keep my plants isolated for at least a, a month or two before I put them with the rest because any pests and, and mealybugs aren't even that bad to deal with but there are worse 
pests out there that will infect plants and they do get really rabid really quickly. So you just want to isolate things. Don't, you know, if you have plants already or, you know, you buy like two or three plants, I quarantine them together, but not, you know, don't put them right next to each other. Even now, I don't like to let my plants touch all that much. I, I like to keep them separated so that way they have some room to breathe and that if anything does happen to one, it doesn't immediately spread to the other. But it's highly important that you keep that in mind. Quarantine new plants, keep them away from existing plants for quite some time. At least a month, I say. Because you won't notice anything right away unless you're proactively looking for it. And sometimes pests don't pop up right away. The next kind of tip is I wanted to kind of just go over like three or four easy plants that I think you guys new to houseplants would be really interested in and really easy to grow. And the first one's going to be actually pothos. And I've covered pothos in the past in another video because it's actually good for aquariums. It helps filter the water. Uh, but it is a really easy to grow plant. It's impossible to really kill this thing. You only need to water it maybe like once every five days to once every week unless you're in a really hot area where maybe like Arizona or Texas in the middle of summer and you see the leaves start to droop. If the leaves start to droop, it needs water, but typically it'll start to droop and then you just give it a nice drink, it's good to go. It doesn't mind having wet soil, although it's always good to let most plants dry out a little bit before you water them. But in this case, you could, you could ne probably never overwater this guy and he'd be fine. So, pothos, really cool plant. We actually, I'll put up some footage of my living room. We have some pothos growing over our archway that's just really nice and really cool looking. So, pothos is probably my number one pick for any new uh, houseplant hobbyist that's looking for a plant. And my next kind of easy plant for people is orchids. This is actually blooming right now. Well, it's already bloomed. It's actually losing the blooms now. Uh, but this is a mini orchid. They have mini ones. They have larger ones. They have all sorts of varieties. You'll typically, you could even find these at Ikea. And uh, if you have an Ikea and they have a like uh, exchange or return area, go check that because you'll oftentimes find these. Granted, those are probably in rough shape. They'll need some help. Um, may, they may have mealybugs or other pests or underwatered and they don't look so good. But I brought a couple back to life and they look really good now. So um, I definitely recommend checking that out. That's like one key tip there. But yes, orchids. They're super easy. Water them about once a week. Uh, if they're in any sort of container, unpot them. Make sure they're in a bark mixture, like with wood chips and stuff. You can actually get a bag of bark mixture from like Home Depot or Lowe's and use that as the growing media. I actually just use a plastic cup with holes that I put put in it because uh, it allows air to flow through the holes and I can see what's going on here with the roots and there's actually like moss growing in here, which is really cool. And um, yeah, so this is, this is what I use, and, but you could use any container. I actually have some. Um, I have one um, growing in, uh, well, they're mostly all in plastic cups, but I've also seen them growing in tins and whatnot. So yes, orchids, very easy. Water them once a week. Don't use an ice cube. A lot of people will say you could put an ice cube in here. They don't like that. They actually like lukewarm water. They're tropical plants. Don't put ice cubes in their pots. Next up is actually ferns. Now this is a, I believe it's called a bird's nest fern. Uh, there's tons of ferns out there. They're all very beautiful. You know how it's a fern because it actually, if I could get you, maybe you could see that. You see this, this leaf right here curling up? Uh, maybe if I turn it, it's so big. <laughs> this is the guy was a lot smaller when I first got it. Maybe you could see that. If anything, I'll maybe get a close up later. But it's a, it's uh, the way you could tell that it's a fern is because it typically has like a center mass and all the leaves kind of unfurl. So they're kind of like curled over like this, and then as they grow, they kind of unfurl like that. That's what ferns are. Ferns are super easy. They do like a decent amount of humidity, but they are low light plants, so they don't require a whole lot of light. They just like moisture. Just water them frequently. I wouldn't say like every day. I would say maybe once every five days, similar to like a pothos. Unless you live in a really hot climate, you may have to do kind of every two or three days. But just wait till their soil feels not that damp anymore and give them a nice drink. And make sure they're in a pot that water can leak out of after you water them because that is definitely uh, key to most plants is allowing water to leak out. But ferns, very beautiful. Plants, I actually have a bigger one upstairs in my um, kind of uh, hallway and or landing area. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, another really easy to grow house plant. I'm going to just talk to you guys through the leaves here. Uh, this is a ZZ plant. 
ZZ plant. Uh, they're, I forget how you say the exact name, but they're, they're super easy. These guys can grow in practically no light at all. Uh, they are a bulb. They're almost like an, on, like an oniony or root plant. Like Think of like a potato. Um, there's like tubers in the ground here, and everything kind of comes up from that. And, uh, you know, you just see this guy. This guy used to be only this tall, and now he's way up here. He's even out of the shot. Like, you can see how big he is. And this guy's just growing really beautifully. And he's still actually in the nursery pot that I got him from Ikea, actually. He's just super good. I like this plant. Super easy. Great one for beginners. I, I would have to say between Pothos or this guy, this these two are, like, kind of the easiest ones you can get. So if you're not sure if you're any good with plants, definitely pick them up. I water this guy once a week. That's it. If you live in a hotter climate, you may have to water a little bit more frequently. Uh, I'm running out of room to put plants, so that's always a good thing. That means you have a lot of them. Alright, so next plant up is actually this guy here. Now this isn't a typical plant that you will find in any store, really, unless it's a specialty nursery. This is called a whale fin snake plant. Um, snake plants are also called mother-in-law's tongue. They're just big, narrow... They're succulent type plants too. They're a succulent uh, variety of plants, which is kind of like cacti and whatnot. But they're particularly easy, very low light. They don't need a lot of light. They don't need a lot of water. They grow very slowly. So they're not, if you're looking for instant gratification, you're not gonna get it here. This guy I've had planted in this pot for almost, I think five months or six months now. Hasn't grown a new leaf yet, but eventually he will and I know he will. It just takes time. They're just super easy to grow plants. You will find smaller versions of this guy. So this guy is a big broad leaf. You know, he's like the size of my hand. You'll find ones that are much narrower typically or ones that kind of like hang over. But definitely snake plants are very easy to grow plants, especially if you don't have a lot of light. And if you don't have a lot of time to take care of it, just kind of throw it somewhere. Water it once a week, once every 10 days. They don't need a lot of water either. And they're good. This is the guy that's always sitting over here. I really like him. Uh, he should be putting off a new leaf soon though. I suspect in, uh, in spring here he'll be growing quite well. So here's another plant too. This guy actually, this is called an African mask plant or an alocasia something. Um, it's a very beautiful plant. I mean, let's just take a look at this leaf. Like very beautiful plant. Now, when I got this guy, he had three leaves about this size. They were quite big. I actually ordered from online, if I do remember. Yes, I got this guy online. And um, he had three beautiful leaves. One died almost instantly. Uh, the next two slowly kind of faded away and didn't put up any new leaves. And that's why you could see like this part down here. This was all that was left. These two little leaves down at the bottom here weren't here uh, when, when those leaves started dying. And I thought it was dead. But I still, I, like I felt down here, it still seemed firm. Um, there was there was like no rotting going on, so I left it be. And sure enough, this little guy popped up here, this little leaf, and then this little leaf over here popped up, and then this big stuff popped up maybe like two or three months ago. It hasn't put up a new leaf yet, and that's because I believe this plant kind of goes through dormancy in a way, and it was during the winter. I ordered it right before like winter happened, so I think that's part of the reason. But now that's spring here, I'm hoping that this guy puts up several new leaves. It's a beautiful plant, the, the African mask plant. These you could get at Home Depot and Lowe's easily. I don't know why I just didn't pick it up locally, but um, I was impatient and wanted it, so I ordered it from online. And uh, house plants don't do well shipping during uh, colder climates, so definitely if it's not like above 50 or 60 degrees, I wouldn't order plants yet. And definitely don't order them like above 90 degrees because they don't do well. Um, but yeah, this guy's nice and like this stalk right here is nice and firm, so I, I know like this guy's doing really well. Um, and th I'm very happy that he's doing well because it's like one of my favorite like looking plants that I have and I can't wait to see what he does. So, and that brings us to our like last kind of plant. This is more of, I know like the, the whale fin back here is like a succulent, but this is also a succulent kind of variation. Uh, it's an epiphyllum. It's called Queen of the Night. I don't know. Can you focus, camera? Focus. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that, but it's Queen of the Night. And it is a kind of um, a cacti or a succulent. And what happened, so I got this from a person on Facebook that I've actually uh, bought stuff from before. And she gave me these three, these three bigger ones here, right? And they haven't really done anything, but then these 
new little guys started popping up, and there's actually two of them. You can see those two little pieces right there. Those are new fronds, and that means that the plant is growing, it's rooted, and it's doing well. This guy hasn't put up anyone yet here, this last one, but if I got two out of the three growing, that's great. And so what's eventually gonna happen, I don't think these older leaves are gonna do anything much, but the newer plant is doing really well, and that's awesome. Uh, these guys are supposedly going to flower at some point. When? I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I think it'll be cool. And um, these guys I just water them, like when I remember it, honestly. I don't water typically that often. Um, they probably would benefit from a little more frequently watering. And I have to repot them because right now they're in like this small pot, probably not doing the best. But that's really all, guys. These are all the plants. I hope I showed you some cool stuff here. But the major takeaways is... You can buy really any of the plants that you'll see locally. Uh, make sure you quarantine them. Watering plants, I typically water most of my plants once a week. Uh, very rarely will I see a plant that's wilting and have to water it earlier than that. Uh, typically it's not that bad unless it's dead heat of summer, then maybe. Uh, but most of the year, water once a week or so. And the last kind of tip that I wanted to leave you with is pots because most people, they, you know, they go to Home Depot and, or Lowe's or uh, anywhere else, maybe they're not too thrilled about pots. So some of the best places to find pots would be Home Goods, Target, uh, TJ Maxx, Michaels. These are all good stores that are home decor that have really nice looking pots. Some of these are just very basic pots, but if you're only going to get a couple plants, I'll be real, you're probably not going to get a couple plants. You'll probably have a lot of plants over time, but for a couple of nice looking pots, definitely check those stores out. They have nice looking ones that are relatively cheap. And now is the time to really go and take a look. We were there just yesterday doing our outdoor landscape project and I found nice pots for like 25 bucks and they are big, beautiful, and you can't really go wrong with that. Another thing for looking for pots is also check Facebook. Oftentimes you'll see people like getting rid of them for like a dollar or two and you can't go wrong there. I mean, picking up like a large pot like something like this, you could probably get for like a dollar on Facebook, which is awesome. But guys, I hope you enjoyed if you want to see more houseplant videos, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe I'll go into depth on some of the ones I showed you here today, or I'll do other ones I have, like probably 50 more different houseplants I could do videos on, so I have a lot, believe me, I have a lot. So I hope you enjoyed, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you're new and you want to check out more houseplant or aquarium related content. If you want to check out a recent video we did on our banana tree plant, you can click over there, which by the way, I have in stock a couple of those, you can order from our website. And if you want to check out our neglected aquarium video, you can click right there, and I will see you guys next time.